My name is Bryce Johnston. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Volunteer Spotlight. I am your host, Evan Starnes, and it is honestly quite hard to believe that we are already in the month of June. I don't know. It feels like we just barely started this year, but I hope you all are enjoying your your beautiful June weather and getting outside and going on some hikes and, you know, just having yourselves a good time. And speaking of hikes, our Audio Trekkers hike is in a month. It'll be on July 27th. And if you want to register for that, you can go to aftersight.org slash hike. The volunteer of the month for June is pretty recent. He started with us, I think, like very beginning of last year. Um, he's got some prior radio experience working in um, at an NPR station in college and a really just a really nice, a, a, honestly, a, a wonderful story about how he got involved. That being said, the volunteer of the month for June is Bryce Johnston. Hi, Bryce, and welcome to the, well, welcome under the Volunteer Spotlight. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. So I always like to start the show off with some good, fun, getting to know you questions, just to kind of get the creative juices flowing. So with all this, you know, beautiful weather and all the, you know, beautiful flowers and all that other good stuff, uh, what was, what would you say would be your favorite thing to do around this time outdoors? Oh man. So I'm actually quite a big golfer. Um, I started playing golf a little bit more after, uh, after college. And so that's, that's takes up quite a bit of my weekends whenever I can get out. Um, and especially here in Colorado where for those that play or, uh, have, have hit any kind of projectiles know that the, uh, altitude is friendly, uh, to, to golfers. So, um, yeah, definitely try and get out and play as much as I can when it's, uh, when it's nice here. That's a really great state to go golfing. You ever just like to go up to the driving range too, just to kind of whack some balls and, and just kind of have fun. Yeah, absolutely. I've got one pretty close to my house. So it's, it's, uh, f- especially when I, uh, moved here from California, it was nice to, uh, just hit a few of them and see how far they can fly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, I enjoy doing that too. Now. Being that this is a show primarily focused on audio content, I always like to ask, what is your favorite type of audio content to listen to? Music, podcasts, or audiobooks, or something else? Yeah, so I have been listening to podcasts more recently, I think, along with uh, most everybody, but um, I've always been a huge fan of sports radio, so just listening to games. Um, I have the Sirius XM, you know, satellite uh package for all the pro sports so uh i think it's like one of the the toughest jobs in in sports media and so i've always been appreciative of uh people who can who can call a game so i love listening to like all the the live sports on the radio yeah it's a lot of especially if you're an announcer or whatever it's you're a lot you're thinking on your feet constantly i i I can imagine it's probably a really stressful kind of job but also fulfilling too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I, uh, tried studying that a little bit when I was, uh, when I was, <laughs> I guess a fair amount younger than I am now. But, um, one thing I've, I understood about it was, you know, you're painting the entire picture, whereas a TV broadcast for those that are, that are viewing and, and able to watch it, you know, they can kind of, you're hinting at it, but on radio, you're describing everything from the uniforms to the, the cut of the grass, et cetera. And I always thought that was super, uh, super powerful. That's interesting. And it almost sounds like it would tie into something like audio description for the blind and low vision community because exactly. Yeah. That's, that's actually kind of cool. I never thought of it in that light, but wow. Always admire, always admire those people and the, the way they're able to talk so enthusiastically, but also <laughs> be thinking on their feet and observing the entire team and the field and the scoreboard. And oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And so, <laughs> Kudos to all those, um, any, if any sports announcers are listening out there, yeah, massive kudos. But anyway, Bryce, um, I'd like to really talk about first how you kind of like got started in audio. You, I know you had a, um, you had a, a gig with an NPR station in college. So yeah, can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. And, and you can even go back a little farther than that. The funniest thing about it was, um, (laughs) when I was, 
I think I was uh, in sixth or seventh grade and I was doing a, an exercise of understanding what celebrities have the same birthday as me. And Al Michaels uh, popped up on my during my research and I, you know, kind of followed his career super closely after that. So I always wanted to do sports broadcasting and kind of follow in his footsteps. So um, fast forward to, you know, being in college and trying to decide what I wanted to study. Uh, I actually got a degree in radio broadcasting. It doesn't that particular program doesn't exist at my college anymore. I think they lumped it in with um, mass communications. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I actually have a radio broadcasting degree. Um, and it's kind of funny because I don't think many places uh, put that on the diploma anymore. But uh, through that process, my uh, I was at Northwest Missouri State for my last two years of college. I had transferred in um, to play baseball and they had an NPR station that was on campus, but it was actually a professionally run uh, radio station. So it wasn't necessarily the student radio station. It was actually a paid gig. Um, then I had to, you know, try out and all that stuff. Um, and they were, you know, they had some students that worked there, of course, because of where it was located. But um, yeah, it was great. I kind of started out reading uh, kind of what I do for uh, Aftersight, actually, like reading news, um, you know, cutting in during NPR programming and reading kind of the local, uh, you know, things that were going on. Um, like breaking news. Yeah, whatever. exactly. And just kind of the local updates. Uh, you'd get, you know, 90 seconds to two minutes, depending on, um, you know, what was on the national NPR station. And then you'd have your local kind of cut-ins. Um, and then we also had some local shows at night. So I did one that was, uh, it was called Nightlight, and it was like the smooth jazz uh, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. shift, um, which I actually liked because I could, you know, kind of get some studying done um, while I was in there. It was a pretty low key show, but um, yeah, that was that was how I actually got to to be on the air, and it was uh, pretty daunting at first, especially being you know 20 21 years old, but uh, a really cool experience. That's awesome. And it is daunting. It, It's going to be, I, I, at least from my personal experience and the experience of others that I've heard, um, you know, in the past, like whether it's radio broadcasting or even podcasting or maybe even making YouTube videos, anything that involves like talking in front of a mic, you get that, that mic fright, you know. Yeah. And the first like, time reading the news was terrifying because you want to make sure – you don't pronounce someone's name incorrectly, especially with the local news, because everyone knows each other. It was a pretty small, small town that was covered. You know, we covered a ton of area. So you're always really making sure you don't trip over anyone's name or uh, I think I mispronounced a performing arts center. Oh, no. um, what everybody knew <laughs> um, in my defense. It was oh. uh, it's the Houston Performing Arts Center, but it's spelled like the city of Houston. So in reading it, you know, in real time, I didn't think anything of it. Um, and then I got correct, corrected by my uh, my station manager. But um, yeah, that was, I think, the most like, you know, the first four or five times out there. Um, you're just really trying to, you know, not get too worried about how many people are listening. And then once you get over that, it's just talking into the glass. Um, but the first few times were definitely pretty freaky. Yeah, and you, I like that you mentioned worrying about how many people are listening because uh, that's a, a very common hurdle that we have to, you know, we podcast hosts and, you know, personalities have to kind of overcome is that, oh, my gosh, what are they thinking of? What if I just say something really stupid or <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> something like that, right? You know? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well, a uh, couple of years ago, I remember you um, you shared this story with us actually when we sent your congratulatory email out but your boss at your um at the um at your job basically told you guys you know go and find a way to um give back to your community so i assume that is what kind of made you first get into volunteering correct me if i'm wrong um so actually i've been doing quite a bit of volunteer work uh off and on since college really um, okay cool my my dad was a big um, you know, philanthropist and, and kind of giving back kind of guy. So even when I was younger, we would do, uh, I was, I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and we would 
uh, volunteer for like the open door mission and do we would like uh, deliver um, or help put together presents and boxes for families that needed them um, every like every couple of years when I was younger. But then um, throughout college and stuff, um, being an athlete, um, I mentioned a little earlier, I played baseball in college. So we, you know, we would dabble in in some other Um, you know, things with like the local special Olympics and, um, you know, different things of that nature. Um, and then after college, I wanted to kind of keep that going. So wherever I've lived, I've always tried to at least do a little something, you know, as much as I can. Um, I get, you know, gotten busier as I've gotten a little older, but, um, still try to make as much time as I can. But, um, yeah, in, in California, I actually ran a half marathon for, the boys and girls club, um, and raised a bunch of money that way. Just seeing as that was something I was going to do, um, was training for a half marathon. So I figured I would, uh, you know, plug into the, the races, uh, right system. So I could, yeah. And so they had, they had an arm where we could raise money for boys and girls club. And then, um, as I moved out here, I was looking for opportunities about 2021 was when we moved. So um, and I actually ran into, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but junior achievement, mm-hmm. um, which I really, I've, I've actually been helping out with, uh, a little bit off and on since then. I did quite a bit more, um, when I was, uh, more frequently in the marketing, uh, and media space, but, um, that was, uh, something that really was, you know, big for me, which was like leaning into helping younger folks with, um, career pathing and, financial, you know, hurdles, like things that I, you know, wish I was taught more when I was in uh, high school, um, getting ready for college and like understanding finances and, um, how you can set yourself up for success. So did a little bit with junior achievement. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, um, about this time, a little bit before this time last year, um, my boss, uh, at that, at the, my previous company, um, was just kind of talking to our team and saying, Hey, you know, if you've already got plans for Martin Luther King day, um, that's totally fine. But if you're not doing anything, um, if you can try and find some local, uh, charity or something you can work with to just give back. Like, it seems like something that, um, you know, MLK would have wanted was, you know, for you to help, help out your fellow, uh, citizens. And, um, so in that process, While I didn't actually get to do anything that day, because as I learned, I needed to uh, qualify to help out uh, after site. Um, That was actually how I found it was by doing some uh, research and finding local uh, nonprofits that I could help out. And like you mentioned, um, having my background in radio, I've got, you know, some of the equipment at the house. And I figured, hey, maybe I'll... uh, you know, see if there's anything I can use those talents for. Um, I use talents with quotation marks, of course, but, uh, use those kind of skills that that I (laughs) learned, use those, those skills that I learned, um, you know, in that time. And I, I really missed, um, you know, doing radio. So, um, I kind of just looked around to see, and that's how I found Aftersight and, um, have been, you know, working on it, uh, ever since. That's awesome. Now, you started with and are still continuing to read the Summit Daily, but you've also done, yes. you know, some some subbing and some extra programming on the side. But uh, what was it like for you the very first time reading the Summit Daily? <laughs> uh, that's actually a good question. The first thing I meant, like I mentioned on uh, being, you know, on the air the first time, uh, uh, you know, making sure I have all the pronunciations correct. I think um, I'm still I'm sure there's still some people that would flag um, me for some stuff, but, um, yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit much just because it is kind of a longer program, even though it's only once a week. Um, you know, reading for an hour straight is something that if you haven't done it in a while, um, can add up pretty fast. So, um, you know, you kind of learn, I had to relearn some of the tricks and stuff to make sure that my voice was consistent and my, I wasn't running out of energy. Uh, not that I'm, you know, running laps around anything, but, um, just the, something that reading out loud for that long straight, if you haven't done it in a while, can can actually be pretty challenging. Um, and then just like, it's been really fun to really feel a little bit more connected to that part of 
Colorado just because, um, you know, in when I moved here, I didn't really ski actually, which people find uh, kind of crazy. But I learned last started learning last year. So last season was my first full uh, ski season. And then this this past year, I got out quite a bit more. Um, so just knowing more about what's going on in those towns that I try to go to on the weekends or during the week when I've got time to, to hit the slopes is, uh, has been a really cool experience. That's awesome. That's actually kind of a common, um, a common thing I've heard from other volunteers, especially ones reading, you know, smaller town papers like, you know, Pueblo or Greeley. Well, I don't, I don't know if Greeley's small, but you know, it's, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's its own, you know, it's an area with a newspaper and it is a really great way to, you know, not only give, you know, blind, low vision people access to that information, but also it does kind of really connect you with your, with your community. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also, I think have just learned a lot about the dynamics of a, a very tourism driven part of the country. So like I used to live in Santa Monica, very touristy, Oh yeah, but I didn't really, yeah. Um, but I didn't, I it's, it was, it was lovely. I was about a 10 minute bike ride from the beach, but, um, it's one of those things that you kind of see it all happen and don't really understand the inner workings of it. And so now by, you know, reading about Breckenridge and, you know, not necessarily Vail as much, but they're, you know, adjacent. Um, But these mountain towns that rely not entirely, but, you know, very heavily on people being there and visiting um, just how that can change the area for the people that have grown up there that have been there for 50 years um, and obviously, you know, running and, and managing those types of towns and the challenges that presents. Um, yeah, it's super, super interesting to get to, uh, to read about that every week and kind of see how things are changing, what they're doing mm-hmm. to make it better for the people that live there full time, uh, while also balancing that, you know, that understanding that you do rely a lot on people visiting, uh, in order to keep, uh, keep everything moving. So, uh, yeah, it's just been it's been really uh, interesting to learn a lot about that part of the state. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of an a, a very under discussed or talked about kind of topic too. So, absolutely. Um, yeah. Now, since you started reading up to up till now, have you picked up any like soft skills or, or is there any like um, any kind of tool or um, strategy that you've picked up since you've started? Uh, I would say I'm a much better at reading ahead while still talking. I think that's something that I needed to really gain throughout this process because as much as I would love to go back and reread and do it over and over till I get it perfect, uh, I don't think anyone has time to do that in the day. Uh, no. um, <laughs> so just being able to understand that I can, uh, you know, make it through and finish, um, you know, within an allotted time that I've set for myself, uh, you know, being able to kind of read ahead while uh, not getting stuck um, on you know certain parts of the reading, I've definitely picked that up, uh, and it's been really helpful because before that, when you're kind of trying to read and uh, read speak read out and loud and read speak, yeah, and exactly, and then you miss like an entire paragraph uh, <laughs> because you don't know what's coming. Um, I think that that's something that I had to to gain on the fly. Yeah, and I think that's one of those skills. And I, this is actually the first time I've heard this mentioned. And I'm really glad it has been been because, uh, you know, when you're reading, um, the art of reading and voiceover is well, and an art. And there's that um, there's that whole balance of you know trying not to read like this is like the most boring possible thing you could ever have read. <laughs> Right. Versus not being so enthusiastic that you are annoying. You know, it's like yes. it's that kind of balance that you got to pick up. Yeah. And matching, you know, something that I learned at the NPR station was kind of matching the tone to the story. Um, and I feel like, you know, when you're doing an hour long read, you're going to get a variety of types of stories, like super positive. Some are very disheartening um, oh, yeah. or, you know, a little bit, a little bit, uh, you know, more on the melancholy side. So, you know, you're doing it and you're kind of ebbing and flowing throughout the hour. Um, whereas, you know, in those 90 second, you know, radio reads, you can kind of just 
package everything together so that they all uh, keep the same tone if you want to. Um, and so it's not as uh, confusing for the listener in their car. But um, yeah, for this, it's just a matter of making sure I'm matching the tone to what's going on and being able to, uh, you know, mesh that as well as something that, um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be able to, to change quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I always, I've always called it like you're, you're more narrating the article, the content in the other article, as opposed to just reading it. You know, it's, um, you're, you're bringing, you're bringing print to life. That's that's <laughs> that's, that's right. the best way to put it, and I work yep. at after sight, so I will flaunt that. Phrase. Yes, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And um, now, would you say too, uh, especially with you know more controversial um, topics? Um, I'm, I won't mention any anything, but you know, well, okay, like politics or right. whatever. Um, would you say it's kind of a bit challenging when you're reading one of those articles to kind of try and keep like an implicit bias out? Because that is something we have experienced from volunteers in the past, and it is actually something we, after sight, have been kind of trying to figure out how to navigate. Yeah, I would say one thing that I've 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 done a pretty good job of being able to kind of compartmentalize. Um, and understand that, you know, my job isn't to have an opinion in my tone or inflection. Uh, my job is to make sure that the way I'm reading it is going to present the best experience for the listener. So, absolutely. um, and one thing, you know, speaking of reading ahead, I think part of what I've grown to be comfortable with is not necessarily, this is going to sound silly, but not necessarily comprehending everything I'm reading. So it's okay for me to not know all the details of everything I'm reading, just even though my wife might ask about it. Um, you know, I'll, I will, it's almost like you're in your brain, you're summarizing it, but you're still reading every word and making sure that, you know, the flow is good. And the, like I said, the tone kind of matches it. So if you're able to do that and kind of separate yourself a little bit, um, emotionally in that way for any story, let alone something that can be very polarizing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's uh, one way to go about it and still be very professional. And um, like I said, giving, giving people the best experience they can have as a listener while, um, you know, not making them feel like you're, um, you know, putting too much or any bias into anything you're reading. Absolutely. And that is like fantastic advice. So, um. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit. I actually believe it or not, I haven't done this in a while on the show, but let's let's talk a little bit about your recording setup. Um, <laughs> okay. Because it's actually this actually used to be um, as a host. This used to be one of my favorite segments to highlight, just because I'm a sucker for audio gear. But it kind of I don't know I I don't know why I left it out of the show, but. It's coming back. So, yeah, can you kind of describe for us, um, you know, your your mic and, you know, what your just your general setup looks like? Yeah, definitely. So I am in a closet uh, in my den, which is where I the den is where I usually watch movies or uh, listen to music or whatever. It's kind of my haven. But there's this little closet um, that's an offshoot from that den and it's kind of tucked away. And so. Um, I thought this would be a good spot to, to post up. So I bought some, uh, soundproofing foam on Amazon, uh, and stuck it to the walls for most of this closet, or at least the section that I'm standing in, uh, to kind of help prevent the sound from bouncing around, uh, where I'm at. And I, you know, I have a little, fortunately I had like a little shelf already built in so I can just set my computer on the shelf. That's about. Uh, yeah, it's about like belly high. So I've got a, basically a standing desk in here. Um, and I actually prefer to stand when I do stuff like this anyway, just to keep the, um, the, the wind pipes, you know, open. Um, so yeah, I got that going and then I got a, a we were chatting before I got a, a microphone, um, on Amazon for maybe 35, 40 bucks about in 2020, um, when everyone was moved uh, to working remotely and the computer that I had at the time, uh, I won't name any names, but it didn't have a, it had a pretty horrible audio input 
Um, and even for, you know, my, my internal meetings and my client meetings, um, it wasn't doing very well. So I bought a microphone just so I could sound better, um, for those types of presentations and, and meeting with people. And so that was kind of sparked this microphone purchase in the first place. And then, you know, come around, you know, flash forward to last year and it has really come in handy. Uh, it's just a little, maybe like f- six or so inch tall, um, you know, stand mic that just sits right next to my computer. And then, uh, I got a little micro USB or USB C adapter so I can plug it in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really simple. No, yeah, it's a great mic. That's cool though, that you built your own, effectively your own recording studio with the studio foam and all that. That's, um, I mean, it sounds fantastic from what I'm hearing, but that's, that's really cool. That was the only, that's the hope. Yeah. I was, uh, I was realizing in my, uh, kind of my test runs and everything that not having the foam, even just on, you know, two of the walls made a big difference. Um, so once I, you know, I saw how much, you know, how cheap it was, I figured, oh, I can just stick this up myself and, um, yeah. And here we are. Absolutely. And for any volunteers out there, you know, that are looking to kind of dampen up some of that, that room echo or whatever it might be. Yeah. Studio foam is a great option and, or you could also, um, just find some old thick blankets and find a way to yep. kind of, I don't know, thumbtack them or uh, adhere them to the walls, um, kind of around your mic setup. Cause that, that also helps. Or, you know, if you really want to, I did blackout curtains. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Bryce, it is now your time to, well, put me under the spotlight now. So do you have any questions for me, Evan Starnes, or the entirety of Aftersight that you'd like to ask? I mean, I guess the one thing I'm curious on is, you know, what's the, you know, are there any exciting plans for the rest of this year, you know, looking into next year, kind of what's the uh, you know, exciting new things that you might be working on that, um, you know, people, volunteers like me can look forward to helping out with. Well, uh, definitely the hike, the, the audio oh, tracker yeah. hike is, um, on July 27th is, um, a huge way to not only meet a lot of our, um, our listener base, but also meet some other volunteers because, um, you know, you'll have the opportunity to, you can, you can register just to like for the general hike, you don't have to be blind or low vision, but you can also, if you're a volunteer, you can volunteer as a, a sighted guide or as, um, I actually, I think we've, we've kind of changed up our list of opportunities, but definitely it's like, if you wanted to guide somebody on the trail, you could do that. And, or, um, you know, just it's just a great way to connect with with people and kind of inspire others and be inspired. So that that is definitely one of the opportunities. Um, Aftersight is also going to be, and I don't have the date at hand, but we'll promote it as it comes up. Um, we're going to be at the Shine Music Festival, uh, and we're actually going to do a a live uh, the Blind Chick show where it's going to be kind of like a Q&A style thing. But of course, volunteers and listeners alike are not only more than welcome, but encouraged to attend. And um, yeah, we'll always have more, you know, we're going to have more, uh, especially with Jennifer on board, more um, fun little (laughs) volunteer events. I don't know if they're going to be as frequent as they have been in the past, but we're going to, we're trying to kind of mix it up between both in-person and virtual because with all of the lovely new innovations that working remotely and volunteering remotely has um, brought us, you know, we've got people volunteering, you know, not only around the state of Colorado, but even in some other countries, uh, go, we've got a volunteer in Africa, for instance, I think, uh, East Africa, I'm actually not okay. entirely sure on that, but wonderful volunteer, um, so that's amazing. Yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're trying to find a good way to appreciate those folks. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah. And the, the brunch was really fun uh, when we did that last month. And I don't know who brought some sort of like cinnamon rolls or something. They were amazing. Um, oh, Jennifer bought the cinnamon rolls. Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. So other than that, I mean, uh, I don't I don't necessarily have any other questions, but. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, you know, expanding how I can, how I can help out more and, uh, you know, get on here as much as I can. I'm, uh, 
you know, am working full time when I, when I actually started, I wasn't. Uh, and so I am now back to like a normal, I guess what you call like a normal person schedule for the most part, but, um, yeah, yeah always looking to, um, to help out wherever I can. Cause I think it's just an awesome organization. And I was telling people about it at my new job that I started about a month ago. And I got a ton of feedback from people. I, we have, my company is small, but we have offices all over the world. And I had people reaching out to me from, you know, random people from all over just saying how cool they thought it was. And, um, I don't know. I just thought that was, uh, it was pretty validating. That's actually wonderful. I love, I love hearing that kind of feedback. So, um, yeah, thank you for, thank you for promoting us and sharing us. And, um, we, we appreciate having you involved and really on the, on the team effectively. That's what I like to say. Part of the <laughs> Aftersight family. Indeed. Yeah. Well, cheesy question and be as cheesy or whatever as you like, but, um, do you got any any words of inspiration or like big pieces of advice? You've already given us a lot of it, a lot of good advice. But do you um, do you have any more advice or just words of inspiration as we wrap up this episode? So I can do one of each. So I think in terms nice. of, uh, <laughs> of of advice, this is the this might sound like the weirdest thing you've heard on your podcast, but I. Yeah was uh <laughs> when i was in college i used to do uh part of what i did was i did statistics for the men's basketball team at my school um you know in the off season from from baseball and i was sitting next to a guy and he had a bag of skittles like a family sized bag of skittles and he was doing the radio for the the rival uh school and i asked him i was like what's going on with those skittles and he said they coat your throat with all the sugar and it allows him to do the whole game by himself without having any issues. And so since then I will, if I know I've got a lot of talking to do for either, you know, a webinar I'm doing for work or for something like this, like a after site project, I will buy Skittles (laughs) and use those, um, as kind of my mechanism as opposed to something like cough drops. Um, you know, because they, it's just kind of like a fun, different way to, uh, to protect the vocal cords, uh, for long speaking engagements. Okay. You were right. <laughs> That's the first time I have heard that today. Thought, that is awesome. Yeah. So there's that. And then as far as just like, you know, I guess like, I don't know about grand advice or anything, but, um, I would say just, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, this year I know have just been affected by, uh, I grew up in Nebraska, so, you know, tornadoes and kind of just, you know, kind of weird things that have been happening. And so I've been thinking a lot about, um, you know, just connecting with with old friends and making sure everyone's doing okay. So I would say, you know, don't be shy to just, you know, get in touch with someone that you haven't talked to in a long time, even if it's been uh, you know, three or four years I had, you know, yeah. reached out to some people and they were just really stoked to hear from me. So, um, and it can really make someone's day. So, um, you know, make that, make that call or, you know, whatever, whatever the, the case may be. Um, cause it's just, uh, something that, you know, I realized I hadn't talked to someone in a while and you no, know, Hey, a tornado ran through their town. I figured I should probably check in and they were, um, you know, everyone was okay, but they were just happy to, to hear from me. So yeah, I would say that's something that I'm, I'm trying to really do a lot more this year. That is wonderful. Yeah. Make that call, shoot that text. You never know. Yep. And Hey, you know, if, if the person is like, Oh, I don't even remember you anymore. Well, yeah, <laughs> cross way. them off the list. You yep, know, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> no, absolutely. I am. I'm so glad you said that. Well, Bryce, uh, I'd like to thank you for joining me under the volunteer spotlight today. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did doing it. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I'd like to thank you all for coming back every single month and listening to the Volunteer Spotlight, as well as all of our other original shows. And if you're a listener, our additions. And I'd like to remind everybody, if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, whatever, you can always email feedback 
at aftersight.org or call our feedback line at 720-712-8856. With that being said, I'm your host, Evan Starnes, and I will see you all in July. Thank you.